For the seventh and final time in the last two days, we will see two teams battle it out for a gold ball here in the WIAA Division I Football State Championship. Marquette University High School and the Franklin Sabres will do battle here. Welcome into the stadium, Brad Hanson. So excited to have you with us. Thanks for hanging out the last couple of days. We've been treated to a lot of really good football, including two really good games today. I have a feeling we're going to get another one right here. To set the table for this one, let's send it up to Jay and Scott. Brad, thanks. Boy, I'm always partial to the team breaking through a banner. Did you get right? to do that? Uh, yeah, I usually trip, though. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, you don't have to do that today. All right. Division one, there's always something special about the division one final, and we're looking forward to a good one. Let's take a look at the two teams. First for the Marquette Hilltoppers. Yeah, Marquette's a team that comes in. They, they've beat Kimberly last week, the traditional powerhouse going through this stuff, right? Um, end up with 11-2 record overall the year, but McDevitt and Novotny are two guys to really watch for this offensive team. They're tremendous players, very well, very well coached. They take to the coaching well. They're poised, and they do what's expected to them. The body has uh, awesome, no, right? rushed for 26 touchdowns this season. Yeah. And you talk about a good running back. How about uh, Terrence Shelton? Well, Franklin's just been on a roll here through the playoffs. I mean, it, it, Terrence Shelton, Offensive Player of the Year for big schools in the state, tremendous running back. I talked with their offensive line coach, Mike Beck, earlier this week. He said, as crazy as this sounds, he might be the best we've ever had. Wow. Let's go down to Nick Tabard on the field. Hi, Nick. Hey guys, we're expecting a physical battle tonight. Both teams have spent a lot of time in the weight room. That's one of the big reasons why Marquette is here. Coach K has been the driving force behind more guys buying in to putting in more hours in the weight room. The Hilltoppers have played a great schedule. Talented uh, teams up and down that that schedule this year. They feel like with all that time spent in the weight room, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anybody. They've proved it, right? They're here at State. You got it, Nick. Thanks very much. Marquette University School won the toss. They deferred the kick to the second half, and so it will be Franklin receiving the first half kickoff and going on offense to begin our Division I championship game. There you see the Marquette Hilltoppers in their familiar Ram helmets with navy blue, yellow pants, white tops, and Franklin in their black uniforms with gold trim. Most importantly, we got numbers we can see. Yeah, thank heavens for that. <laughs> 43 degrees at kickoff. Light winds northwest at 5. Sun behind the western stands here at Camp Randall Stadium. So conditions pretty darn perfect for the 17th of November. Here's the kick by Eric Schmidt, who's one of the best kickers not only in the state but in the country. And it's a touchback. And now... Here comes Franklin onto the field. Okay, here comes the Menards keys to the game, brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards for all of your home improvement needs. Yeah. Well, Terrence Shelton, a, a guy or, or throwing through the air, and Marquette, as we saw there, special teams are going to be an important part of their game plan tonight, trying to tilt the field position in their favor. Franklin's offense averages almost 40 points a game. Marquette's defense allows just 7.7 .7 per game. First play of the game is a running play, as you might suspect. And Terrence Shelton finds the going a little tough. Got a few yards out of it, but it'll be second down. All right, here are your players to watch, brought to you by Rural Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here, stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. Nate Schramm, number eight, is the main guy of that defense, the quarterback, if you will, linebacker position. He comes into the game over 100 tackles, three touchdowns, or excuse me, two sacks, uh, and one fumble recovery. Just a tremendous athlete. Calais looking to throw, gets to the far side. That's a completion. Going to be spun down just short of the first down. Andrew Human, the Franklin tight end on the reception. It's going to be third and about a yard for the Sabres. Let's look at the Franklin offense. Take a look, a couple wide receivers, running backs, all the guys that get the glory right in the skill positions. I, th I think the Franklin offensive line is tremendous. They're very well coached. They're physical. And they all got their shirts hanging out. I like to see them. Even though they're not going to get muddy tonight, they, they got a little edge to them. All right. Third and a little more than one for Franklin on the first possession of the game. Shelton. Oh, he's taken down. Josh Knacker, number nine, was first there. Nate Schramm helped him out. And, boy, a big stop early for the Marquette Hilltopper defense. Well, trusting your keys, reading your keys, and a nice job. Nobody picked up. 
number nine, and, and you have to account for him, right? Knacker's a guy that's going to be able to get off the edge as an outside linebacker. He, he flows very well. And you see gang tackling, Rick. That they need to corral this offense in front. Got to force them sideline to sideline. But um, again, dial up some different stunts and blitzes early here to see what what works and what doesn't. And then you start working from there. Tate Kowalik also went on the tackle for Marquette. So three and out for Franklin. Here comes Cooper Mueller to punt it away. This one turns over. Pretty good kick back to the 30 yard line. And on the return is Murphy Monreal for the Hilltoppers. He gets out to the 40. So that's where the Marquette offense will begin. And let's take a look at some players to watch again. Brought to you by Rural Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here. Stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. The Marquette offense. We just talked about these guys a little bit ago, right? Again, a lot of skilled players. And there's a little love for the offensive line for the Hilltoppers. Jack Hart, their offensive line all state player you're going to see players either first team honorable mention all over the field here tonight for both these squads very similar numbers for the marquette offense to the franklin offense 37.7 points per game and very similar numbers for the franklin defense they allow eight points per game so this could be in fact of the defensive struggle tommy novotny gets the first carry for the hilltoppers there just trying to establish a little bit here. You come out maybe a little bit more guarded with your play calling to begin with. But going against the Franklin Sabres defense that linebacking core is outstanding. Part in, uh, in part because the defensive line does what they're supposed to do and let those guys go out and play. Second and seven for Marquette. McDevitt to throw over the middle complete. And that's taken there by Peyton Roby Brown. That's his 25th catch of the year for Roby Brown. And that's going to be third about three for Marquette. Just trying to get some things established here. Offensive coordinator sometimes will script the first ten plays just to see how the defense reacts to different formations, what they're running, and, and then they start charting plays so they can go down by down, drive by drive. Third and three, Marquette. Run to Novotny, and he bowls forward to the midfield stripe, and that's going to be a first down Hilltoppers. Nothing real fancy so far between both these squads. The Hilltoppers will take some shots down the field. They have the ability to do that. Last week they did it against Kimberly in a 14-7 game. Franklin Sabres defensively last week shut out Sussex Hamilton in, in a level four game in a, against a really good Sussex Hamilton team. Yeah, really good. Okay, first and ten Marquette, 50-yard line. McDevitt rolls right, throws it over the top of the head. He was looking for Thad Hoffman. Hoffman, 39 catches on the season. McDevitt on the year, 137 of 225. That's a 61% completion percentage. 1,782 yards, 16 touchdowns, 7 interceptions. He also can run the ball some. 74 tries, 270 yards, and 5 touchdowns for Peter McDevitt. Well, that's a familiar name through the years at Marquette football. Another pass attempt. This is Roby Brown again, and as soon as he catches it, he is level. Will Graffin made the tackle. Nice job pursuing outside linebacker from Graffin. Reads it, gets out to the outside edge, and then delivers a nice pop. Good form up, squared up tackle. Didn't leave with his head right there. That's a textbook right there. Tremendous play. Boy, does that get you going? <laughs> I, I, I like that. Back yeah. making a form tackle. <laughs> Gosh, he should be wearing 37. Here's McDevitt in trouble, and down he goes. Big sack by the Franklin defense. Jace Miller got him. Fifth sack of the year. We talked about the linebackers for Franklin because they have a really, really good defensive line. And, and case in point right there, two guys broke free off, the, off their blocks, both in pursuit. Tremendous job of stunting. They take a little bull rush, and, and then they just do a simple X stunt by two guys on the right-hand side. Both of them pop free. Um, that's something that the Hilltoppers have to get corrected along that offense line. Communicate when you run a different stunt, somebody has to pull off and go get the other guy. And Hefter also helped out Miller on that sack. So quickly, Eric Schmidt into punt. Yeah, not only is he a great place kicker, he's a great punter. Wow, did you see that guy get flipped <laughs> trying to get the block there? Fair catch made about the 14-yard line. Well... No lack of effort so far. It's been pretty fun, and defense is the story so far. Now a message from your statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station.
Well, Franklin got the kickoff, the opening kickoff, moved it five yards, punted. Excuse me, Franklin moved it nine yards, punted. Then Marquette got the ball, moved it five yards, punted. So here we go. Franklin back at their own 15-yard line. Second possession. Shelton, nothing doing. Well, looked like he was trying to escape, but he could not. Cole Fisher was on the scene. Well, one of our keys of the game was getting him involved early and often. That's all it's been so far. I would think the offensive corner at some point is going to have to switch that up a little bit because the Hilltoppers right now are teeing off on that, pursuing really well, getting off blocks, keeping shoulders square, not allowing gaps for Shelton to get through. But communication to Terrence is be patient. The time will come and you'll get something. We just need to be patient through this process until we can get things corrected and get the right plays called for you. Shelton, three carries, three yards so far. But, of course, we're very early. Still 6.20 left first quarter. Now here's Calais throwing, completing. Jocks Brooks right over the middle. First down, Sabres. Great protection up front by the offensive line, buying Calais time, and he's patient, waiting for his receiver to clear to the middle. Splits between the two linebackers. Perfect throwing. Brooks with the reception. Great job in being patient again. That, that patience is going to be important through the course of this game. Jocks Brooks, number one, the only the third player at Franklin to start all four years on varsity. Now, here's Shelton trying the left side, and again, defense right there. Murphy Monreal from his safety position for the tackle. Looks early here that the, the Hilltopper defense, right, is, is keying on the run plays. Uh, defensively, and you have to pick one or the other, right? And, and obviously that's that's the one you're going to look at with the offensive player of the year with, with Shelton. If you can contain him, that's a really good thing. That forces the Sabres to do some different things offensively, maybe that they don't want to here early in the game. Terrence Shelton headed to the University of Buffalo to play football. Coach Brown says he's the best running back Franklin's ever had. He's got a pass reception here. Tries to make a move around Knacker, but Knacker played it pretty well. It's going to set up third and short for Franklin. Nice job by Shelton just clearing out away from the linebackers, drifting to his side. Third and short is a lot more manageable than third and long, so this opens up a little bit different part of your playbook. They come out a little different pro-type set. Shelton saw off to the left-hand side. We'll see what they dial up. Shelton can catch passes. That's his 21st reception on the year. Quickly to the outside. They were looking for a human. Trying to have him catch it and make something happen to get a first down, but incomplete. It'll be fourth down for Franklin. Jack Carter we talked about earlier on the offensive line. Also in the mix out there defensively. Got off the edge really quick. Forced a, a quick pass behind the receiver. Those are things when, when you can recognize what play is going to happen. A little screen out to the outside edge. Just a quick dart pass. Distracts your quarterback. Distracts your receiver. Pass ball is incomplete. Nice job defensively in execution by the Hilltoppers. Cooper Mueller out to punt again. He's averaging 39.4 yards per punt this season. Again, very light win. Shouldn't be much of an issue here for the Division I championship game. Mueller gets it away cleanly. A low liner is going to bound about the 30. And Marquette will get out of the way and let it roll to a stop at their own 21-yard line. Okay, second opportunity for the Marquette offense when we come back. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. We have a timeout on the field. No score yet in our Division I state football championship game. The 2023 WIAA football championship is brought to you by Rural Mutual Insurance Company. Premiums paid here, stay here to keep Wisconsin strong. A proud partner of the WIAA Rural Mutual Sportsmanship Award for 50 years. All right, Hilltoppers offense, 21-yard line. That's where they'll start. Novotny to the right of McDevitt, the quarterback. It'll be the running back, Novotny. He'll pull Bull forward to the 25-yard line, and he's pulled back, gain of about four. Keith Plastinski, the Marquette head coach, says Tommy Novotny just needs a sliver of daylight. You know that? You know who else they said that about? Gail Sayers. There you go. <laughs> I just need a sliver of daylight. Not to say that Tommy Novotny's getting stairs, but right. he's a pretty good running back. Quick throw to Hoffman. Thad Hoffman breaks a tackle. Breaks another. Just short of the 40-yard line. First down completion, McDevitt to Hoffman. 
just a quick pass to the outside edge, and you need to break down defensively in, in that particular play. Davis just overran it, right? Yeah. You break down about a yard earlier, pick a side. He forced him back inside, which is fine, but the pursuit has to be a little bit quicker in recognition and getting out the edge to help him. Empty backfield now, McDevitt. Three wide receivers left, two to the right. Here comes Franklin on the blitz. They throw it to Cam Russell, and it's a completion. Taken down by Talon Summers, but not before they get a gain on first down and another completion by McDevitt. Good play call here. Blitz coming straight up the middle. They're running a tunnel screen back to the inside. Really good job by McDevitt to recognize that and deliver the ball quickly and let his playmakers go at it. Peter McDevitt is the fourth McDevitt to play quarterback for Marquette. His dad, Patrick, his brothers, Mike and Matt, also at that QB spot for Marquette Hilltoppers. Novotny, there he finds some daylight inside of Franklin territory. First down, Marquette. Well, you talked about Jack Hart, 55. I think you ran right around number 55 <laughs> yeah. there. Which that whole left side of that crazy. offensive line, Jay, did a tremendous job of getting guys down on the ground. They just went off tackle. You see the mass of bodies in there. Yep. Defensive players can't get through that, so they keep bottling it up. That bodes well for the running backs. Dave Miller also on that left side. Pump and go, and wide open. Touchdown, Marquette. Cam Russell, 44 yards. Well, he froze him with the pump fake, and Russell just had to run under it. His ninth touchdown reception of the year. Hardest thing to do that when you're the receiver, right? You're wide open. It's secure the football. He does a really good job of locating it, squeezing and bringing it in. A little stutter step. Maybe caught the defensive back peeking back inside with that double move, that little hitch, and then just to continue down the, the sideline with, with a seam route. The old fly pattern, so yeah. it's great. Yep. So Cam Russell now with 51 receptions on the year. That's his ninth touchdown. Here's Eric Schmidt for the extra point. Nearly automatic. Ooh, that was a little tight. Nearly, yeah. <laughs> curled inside the upright and good. 7 nothing. Marquette. Another look at Peter McDevitt. Pump and go. Five plays, 79 yards, a minute 54 off the clock. Well, again, being patient, the time will come when the plays are going to be there. Marquette runs a play, really good run play. They come back, they, they give a little pump fake, freeze the cornerback, freeze the safety. Receiver continues down, up and over the top. Really good job executing all the way around. Protection up front, quarterback with the fake, receiver continuing his route for six. We mentioned Keith Blesdinski is the Marquette head coach. Boy, what a great tradition and history. There you see on the left, his dad, Ron, coached in and won the very first state championship in the state of Wisconsin, public or private. That was 1969 when he led Manitowoc Ron Colley to the win over Chippewa Falls McDonald. And here, here we go. Unfortunately, Ron passed away March 1st, but... Here's Keith, coaching Marquette. And it's, and he, in fact, uh, we're told that Keith just took a look up at the board and saw the picture of his dad up there. And, oh, man. Yeah, a little bit of emotion there, right? Like, yeah. But how special for him to be doing something similar to what his dad did, and leading, yeah. leading these young men, coaching them up, right? Giving them an opportunity to be successful. And, well, and right, right now they're, they're putting pretty good show on. Keith said... He was uh, rode the bus as a five-year-old to that championship game, and now his ten-year-old grandson Carson was one of their water boys, and he rode the bus down. That's so, wow, cool. You talk about full circle, my right? goodness. And his team is up seven nothing right now. Twenty-yard line is where Franklin will start this drive. Calais calling signals. Brooks in motion. Calais keeps it. Throws. Complete. And that is Brooks. First down, Franklin. Franklin is, tends to be what, what I've seen over the years, even a couple years ago when they won the state title, more of a passing type of offense. When you got a running back like Terrence Shelton, that changes things a little bit, but they don't get away from who they are, right? We're just seeing what we expect from Franklin. We're seeing a sound defense from Marquette. 
and they're not going to stray from that. That's the recipe that got them here. They're going to stick with it. Murphy Monreal made the tackle, but not before Brooks got 13 on that reception. Now they go deep looking for Hillman. Wow, he was turned around, nearly turned back the right way and made a great catch between two defenders, but it fell incomplete. Well, I think that's the key right there. The quarterback trying to get it up and over the top. Kelly trying to throw it through into double coverage that way over one receiver that makes it really hard. Really good job of getting off the hash from the safety of the corner. Just playing off man, maybe quarters over the top. Right, just trying to make sure that that ball gets overthrown far enough. At least with chance for his receiver to get it. But that's a tough throw to make in the double coverage. Second and ten, Franklin. At their own 33. Two and a half minutes left, first quarter. Seven nothing, Marquette. Calais. Human. First down. Well, every time I see a Franklin quarterback, I think Miles Burkett. Yeah. 20, he did all right. Yeah, 2021, Burkett led Franklin to a perfect 14-0 season. How about this for a year? 206 for 289, 71% completion percentage. He threw for 3,400 yards and 36 touchdowns with four interceptions. That's a pretty good year. Yeah, pretty good stats. Calais not bad either. He's completed 61 or 62%, 21 touchdowns, five interceptions. Now the protection breaks down a little bit. Has a man going deep. That's Meissner. Wade Meissner, did he catch it? He did. What a grab by Wade Meissner. How'd he do that? That's a great question. Tight roping down the sideline. Again, has to be a perfectly thrown football, but he adjusts a little bit. Oh, squeezes it. That's close. Not sure he had control before he hit the ground with his foot in, but Franklin wisely gets the play going quickly. Another look to see. Well, our camera work this week has been fantastic. Been great. great. Inbounds right now. Foot is down. Wow. Bobbles it. That was for 35 yards. <laughs> These guys are remarkable. Calais, by the way, 6 of 8 for 93 yards already. And Franklin knocking on the door at the 9. Well, this is the first sustained offensive drive we've really seen that's been going and moving the chains. Marquette struck quick. Franklin's got some good things going now. Ah, from the 14, I should say. Calais, complete, human. Touchdown, Franklin. That's Andrew Human from 14 yards out. Well, the offense is starting to wake up both ways here. Calais moved them right down the field. First couple of drives, great defense. Now we've seen some great offense, some guys making plays all over the place. Again, great protection up front. Patience as a quarterback, trying to wait for your receivers to clear and delivers a strike. Human's a good, big target. 6'2", 193. Mueller to tie the game with the extra point. Ooh, boy, nearly got a piece of it, did that on-rushing hilltopper, but it's good. 7-7. Seven, seven. That drive, seven plays, 80 yards, took him a minute seven. It's amazing how fast, when you, when you have a fast type of offense, you get on the ball really quick, play calls get in, and how fast these guys can strike. It's a lot of fun to watch. We'll see if the defense can tighten up a little bit again like we saw in the first couple drives, but... You saw Franklin open things up a little bit more. Really hard getting Terrence Shelton run on the ground. They're like, fine, you're going to stop him? And you're going to force us to pass? We'll pass. Yeah, there's the Franklin fans. They're hoping for another perfect season. They're 13-0 right now. This is the fifth time Franklin has played for a state WIA football championship. They won the title in 2021 with Burkett in charge. And they also won a Division II title in 2006. This year, they're champions of the Southeast Conference. Franklin located in Milwaukee County in southeastern Wisconsin, four miles from Mitchell International Airport. Did you know that in the 1950s, Franklin was called the city of homes because it was growing so fast? I did not know that. Now you do. Start calling you Cliff Cleveland. I, I tell you, you already do. <laughs> uh, in a little while, I'll tell you why they're called the right, top. Fair enough. Okay. Here we go, 7-7. Seven, seven. Boy, we got a great one developing here, don't we? The kick will carry to the one, and it's going to be returned. That's Murphy Monreal, and he doesn't get to the 15. Ran into his own guy, knocked him backwards. Well, we had a great Division II final, didn't we? Take a look at that kickoff again. Really good. Badger was leading. 
Wanaki scored late 34-33. They rolled the dice, went for two, didn't get it. 34-33, Badger won Division Two. Here we go now, 7-7. Seven, seven. As Andrew Human caught the touchdown pass to tie it up from Joey Kelly. Another pass for McDevitt. Complete to the outside to Cam Russell. He has the Marquette touchdown. Boy, nice move there to get a first down for the Hilltoppers. Really like the effort looking on the outside edge of number 17, Hoffman. The pass is out to the outside edge. He's trying to locate guys to block, never giving up, right? Those are the things, those little extra things. Find somebody to go block. Don't just stand around and watch. Hilltoppers really well coached on that extra effort. Cam Russell who caught that pass. Team captain, preferred walk-on offer from Wisconsin, qualified for the state track meet. McDevitt, boy, they're putting it up and completing. Boy, right, great job of shielding there by Thad Hoffman as Ty Davis couldn't prevent the completion. Little mismatch on size out there. Davis is only 5'10, so you got some size. But again, we've seen both quarterbacks deliver the football on the spot, right? Where their guys can go get it. They know how to get to it. Just got to give them a chance. Now, Novotny with some shifty moves just short of midfield. McDevitt off to a good start like Calais. 7 of 8 for 99 yards and a touchdown for Peter McDevitt. There's number 12. They'll go shotgun this time. They'll pitch it to Novotny. Wow, he got flipped. Will Graffin got him in the air. Jace Miller finished him off. I like how they brought the tight end over on, in motion to the other side, trying to tilt the defense a little bit, creating extra bodies for blockers down on the edge. And then you just got to get the yards you can get. A really good job running. By your, your running back. Boy, we've seen a few bodies flying through the air already tonight, huh? Yeah, Novotny got popped on that one. It sure did. Try it again with Novotny. It looked like he was going to break through the left side there. Got to the 40. So, final seconds of the first quarter. And Marquette will let it tick down, and that will do it for the first 12 minutes. Oh, we got a great one going. 7-7, seven, seven, Marquette Porter and Franklin. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. We start the second quarter, second and five, Franklin at their own 41-yard line. The defense were dominating early, and now the offense has kind of taken things over as both quarterbacks have been very efficient in moving their teams down the field. There's McDevitt handing off to Novotny. He gets to about the 40 for a short gain, so third and about five. For Marquette. You know why they call the Hilltoppers? I know you're going to tell me. Okay, they're, they're located at Wisconsin One Avenue and 35th Street. Third in 19, or 1857 as an academy for young men to educate Catholic immigrants. That's why it was founded. In 1881, the new Jesuit school opened at the Hilltop of 10th and State Street. So, they're on the top of the hill. Top of the hill. They're called the Hilltoppers. Creative. How about that? <laughs> Cam Russell on that play. Fourth down. So at the plus 40-yard line, Marquette's showing like they're going to go for it. Got to be disciplined up front on the defensive line where you don't jump on this one. Will they just try and draw them off sides, or will we see a play? Nope, we're going to go. McDevitt, plants, throws, complete. First down, Peyton Roby Brown. So McDevitt gets the fourth down conversion. Just a little wrap in, little hook route. Push like it's vertical until it's not. Puts his foot in the ground, wraps around, balls delivered on time. Nice play call, great execution. McDevitt's now eight out of ten. Yeah. 
104 yards for McDevitt passing. This is first down for the Hilltoppers. Wow. That play got broken up by Talon Sam Summers. Talon Summers. Five and a half sacks on the year. Boy, he blew that play up in the backfield. Yeah, smart by McDevitt to recognize he came through free as he turned around. He felt that pressure. You hand that ball off, that's a fumble waiting to happen. Heads up play to hit for, by him to secure the football. But, wow, shoot the gap quick as a linebacker. That was tremendous by Summers. Loss of seven. Late blitz coming from the corner. Throw, nearly complete penalty marker down. Looking for Thad Hoffman. Close coverage there, and Ty Davis a little frustrated at the flag. I think Davis was thinking interception, trying to get underneath the receiver on that particular play, but nice job by Hoffman to sell it. Unfortunately, Davis has got into him a little bit early. That's one where it's really hard to break. He's on a slant route. On a deep post pattern, so to speak, and trying to break underneath it, you'll see him just get their feet tangled up as, as he covers over the top. His eyes are back locating the football instead of going through the receiver. Step in front, but that's a quick reaction time that you have to put your foot in the ground and dive in front. But, again, just got out a little bit too early. You heard David Steiger as our referee from Kimberly. Brian Cross, the umpire from Brilliant. Matthew Schaefer, linesman from Brandon. Bruce Schaefer from Kilton is the line judge. And Brian Schaefer from Combined Locks is the back judge. Three Schaefers in our officiating crew here. All right, pass interference, that's a 15-yard penalty. And here's Novotny, ran into his own blocker, and then he's gobbled up. Penalty markers fly, a couple of them. Face mask. Good to have Pat Miles up here in the booth as our rules interpreter. Any, anytime Pat looks over and gives me a signal, I know it's going to be right, so I'll just go with it. He, the, the, uh, Dave Steiger kind of looked like he was going to do holding, but he, then he went face mask. Got so himself, good job, yeah. yeah. First down, Marquette. 20-yard line. Novotny, penalty again at the line of scrimmage. Got about four, but again, a flag. Right where the ball was snapped at the 20. We have an illegal formation on the offense. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Five men in the backfield. Okay, six guys in the line, so there you go. That's just communication, right, for the, the play call that you have. Some players just get miscommunicated with and or don't catch the signal like they're supposed to. And quarterback should take a look at that, but there's a lot going on for him to read the defense, etc. Both teams have had a couple penalties. Again, just settle down. Just keep playing your, your brand of football, and good things will happen. Second and 15. Novotny Carey picking his way. 22-yard line. Maybe the 21. Going to be third and long for Marquette. The Hilltoppers got a little help with a couple of those penalties already. Now they just kind of stalled here defensively. Franklin shifting up front, trying to figure out what side they're going to and, and creating some different blocking schemes and moving late, shifting late, bringing a linebacker down, blitzing. So you're, you're seeing some different things happening defensively. And, Trying to confuse that offensive line for Marquette. The scoreboard says third and 12, but it's actually second and 12. Little miscue there on the scoreboard. Now here's McDevitt keeping it himself and getting inside the 20. So now it will be third and long. The down marker on the field is correct. That's third down. The scoreboard was one off. Nothing gets by Jeff, our statistician, either. Oh, God, he's been here all week, and he's been fantastic, as usual. I can't say enough about the whole crew. I mean, doing seven games, is that's quite a challenge. 
Novotny, they're gonna try and run it, and the Sabres are there to greet him. Now take your pick, which which guy do you want to name? Them? Yeah, right. <laughs> the guy to me, I, I think I, I saw shoot the gap, get off his block really well. Number four, Manuel Joseph, one of the linebackers for Franklin does a really good job of, of reading it, getting downhill. Linebackers really need to be aggressive. Once they read the key, they got to go. They can't hesitate. They can't run flat. They got to get downhill and does a nice job of stalling that dry or that run and forcing the, the fourth down here now for a field goal try going to be a 39 yarder for Marquette. I'm glad you said Emmanuel Joseph, one of the Franklin spotters who's giving me the pronunciation says he doesn't like to be called Emmanuel. He likes to be called Manny, but Manny, if he does right. something wrong, <laughs> <laughs> then he gets called Emmanuel. Fair enough. Here's Eric Schmidt with the field goal try. It's going to be from 39 out. Man, that guy can kick a football. It's good. Eric Schmidt, 57 of 58 on extra points, 10 of 12 field goals, now 11 of 13, so pretty good. Now the word from our statewide sponsors. This is your WI Network Station. We have immediate time. Eric Schmidt, well, selfie time. <laughs> Eric Schmidt just kicked the 39-yard field goal to put Marquette up 10-7. The 2023 WIA Football Championship brought to you by the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, reminding you to look for the proudly Wisconsin badge to know you're getting the best quality and supporting local dairy farms. A couple other people I want to think in our production. Doug Brown, so good putting the, pushing the buttons and directing all the man he's been doing state basketball and state football forever and uh kevin brunton has been our producer and i tell you what he talks us off the ledge all the time and make sure we're doing the right things at the right time so I'd, lo I'd love to say everybody's name because everybody's done so well and worked so hard but thanks for all your efforts here's shelton on the return and breaks through past the 30. Mitchell Nigro on coverage for Marquette. Much more physical of a game here than we've seen. Even Division Two is really physical um, in the the Wanakee game, right? Like they, that was one. When you when you take a look at that, um, those are two teams, or these are two teams here tonight. Division One, right? Again, all the six we've had previous year have been. Really fun to watch. They've earned their way to get here, but th this is culminating with Division One, right? This is where the big boys are, and um, they haven't disappointed yet tonight. Yep, Shelton tripped up. 22, Mitchell Nigro got an ankle. The tackle. Nigro, all state, all region. Plays basketball, captain, brother Vinny was a two-time all-state inside linebacker. Now Mitchell and Nigro taking care of things here for Marquette's defense. Second and nine, got only one there. Kelly, here comes the blitz, and they got him. Evan Meyer got him down. Again, a little stunt, right? You see different things defensively dialed up. The defensive end crashes down. Linebacker loops around. Really good job. That's something that Franklin has to talk about. Then if, if you're seeing that, you have to have some sort of code word, right? That, that when you recognize a blitz where one guy can come off, you're both engaged on one. Somebody has to pull off. Just no communication on the left side of the offensive line there. Usually they say look out, right? The old yeah. look out block. Yeah, he came clean, did Meyer. There's Hillman. Got another catch. Got to the 31. That's going to be well short of the fourth down, so Franklin will have to kick it away. P.J. O'Brien in coverage there, defensive back, closed really, really quick after the ball's in the air. You see him put his foot in the ground and drive through the tackle. Really nice close on his part. We've seen some plays here back and forth, again, similar to the Wanakee Badger game, right? Badger was running, yeah. gashing him on the line. Wanakee comes back through the air. And, um, really solid play and an exciting game that we saw in D2 and really set it up for what could amount to a similar type game here tonight with these two. High snap handled by Mueller. Here's the return by Murphy Monreal. Can't get to the outside. Good coverage there by Robert Beglinger for Franklin. And I think we have a penalty marker. Yeah, penalty marker about the 45-yard line of Franklin. So before we take a break, we'll check out the flag. 
See if we have to kick it again. Marquette is a very senior-laden team, 27 seniors. And Keith Klistinski says he gets tremendous senior leadership. There's Keith. We have a hold on the receiving team, 10-yard penalty, and then we'll have a first down and then media timeout. Okay, so Marquette gets the ball back, leading 10-7. Now another question from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIA Network Station. Marquette leads at 10-7. The Hilltoppers get the ball back. We talked about senior leadership there. Now more we go down to the field with Nick Tabbert. Hey, guys. Marquette actually has a mentor program. Two senior captains, Peter McDevitt and Cam Russell, helped organize. They helped initiate getting all levels of the program together. Freshmen sitting with seniors, all the different grades together. They even had a seating chart for Coach K. And then Cam Russell, he cleaned up the coach buses after last week's game, made sure nothing was left behind. Wow. Thanks, Nick. That explains some things, I think. Yeah, little things make a difference. Yeah. Here's Novotny, first down carry. Just past the 30. I talked to a lot of coaches, and what they say a lot of times is that the best teams they have is when the players, I'm not in charge, but the players take a lot of the leadership. Yeah, and a lot of times it's servant leadership, right? Teaching the young guys what, what's expected for your program, and that's how you develop a quality quality program, and uh, Marquette's been that for years. Franklin has been that for years. Yeah, Novotny. Oh, slips the tackle of Griffin and makes something out of nothing as he gets to the 37th. Talon Summers finally got Novotny down, but not before he got a first down. Slipper here trying to get through this tackle. Ray, he's going down low, went to his knees. Stay on your feet, drive through the tackle, make the contact first before you drop it to bring him down. Those are just little things that can be corrected. So fresh set of downs for the Hilltoppers. McDevitt fakes the pitch, now throws and throws wide. Looking for Thad Hoffman. Smart throwing that away. Both guys were covered on, over on the sideline towards Marquette's sideline. Heads up, faking the reverse, probably setting some stuff up for later. Just seeing how the defense responds to those things. And are, are they disciplined enough to stay on the backside for something like a reverse? And again, smart play to throw it out of bounds. Marquette University's second trip to the WIA State Finals. The other time was in 2009. Prior to joining the WIA, Marquette won eight WISA titles in football. Novotny carry to the 40. Annie Joseph among the tacklers for Franklin. Marquette has shown a tendency here on first down to run it. They're gaining four or five yards. I don't know why he would change that plan, but that's something certainly to Franklin to, to keep on top of as far as play execution, the stuff they dial up defensively, but right now it's been a run game on first down, second down primarily. Novotny, 14 carries, 57 yards. It's an average of 4.1 a carry. And before the play gets going, flags. We have a dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Repeat third down. So that pushes the Hilltoppers back five and makes third down a bit more of a challenge. Yeah, situ situational awareness, easy for me to say. Um, but coaches will have a list of plays and different situations that they go through and check that off. Usually early in the season, within the first two weeks, that the players are prepared. And um, now you got a third and long situation offensively and defensively. We'll see how aggressive Franklin gets. Devitt to throw. Here comes the rush. Drop it off to Novotny. And it's going to be short of a first down by about six yards. That last play, just watching that screen set up, was watching the Franklin sideline, and a bunch of guys, you can tell when they're yelling something, they all kind of step forward, and so everybody recognized that. It's communication from your sideline. The guys in the field can hear that. Defensive linemen can stop, retrace their steps, and, and pursue. And really good job defensively that time, bringing them down for a fourth and six. And th those are the things that you need to have your players engaged on the sideline to help the players, the 11 guys out in the field, to recognize what's going on. It's Lewis Brown, the Franklin head coach. 12th season as head coach, but he's been with the Franklin football program for 31 seasons. But boy, those 12 years as head coach, he's 130 wins and 22 losses. 
So another punting situation on fourth and six, and Schmidt will try and boot this one away from about his own 30-yard line. And before that happens, a whistle and timeout Marquette. The 2023 WIA Time football champion. on the field by Marquette. All right. The 2023 WIA football championship is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. Smart move calling a timeout for Marquette there. I was watching the back judge. He was on the countdown. He was almost to five when the whistle blew. So heads up playing recognition by the coaches to get that where they don't lose another five. And you know, we, we talked early on, field position special teams have to play a part in this game at in every game, honestly, but in this one's particularly forced Franklin to drive a little bit further. You got a really good kicker and punter, same guy. Um, try and pin him back deep here with, with only 225 less than in the half. If you can pin him deep, that sets things up a little bit differently offensively for Franklin in the mindset. If they can get it up to the 30, 35 yard line, now you've got more of obviously a shorter field to go and, and you can do some different things still without burning timeouts controlling the clock and making sure that you don't turn it back over to marquette okay again schmidt to punt it away on fourth and six for marquette this is a high floater fair catch called for and made by ty davis well, coming up at the half, we'll have a discussion with the executive director of the WIAA, Stephanie Hauser. Boy, there's a few things going on. A lot to talk about with Always you. is. But uh, she's doing a great job leading the WIAA. Boy, I mean, there's so many challenges. And, you know, to, uh, NIL is heading toward high school. Yeah. So that's a challenge. And they're, Unfortunately. You know, they're going to try and get out ahead of that. But, boy, that's a monster that you don't know. How to get ahead of it, perhaps, but they'll, they'll give it a shot. Again, Stephanie Hauser at halftime. Looking forward to it. Okay, here comes Franklin. Down three. Great grab there by Shelton. Passes a little high, but the running back grabbed it. And that'll set up second down after a gain of about five yards. Franklin has all three timeouts remaining. So we'll see if they can get a tying field goal or perhaps a touchdown to take the lead just before half. Marquette University will get the second half kickoff. Calais going to go deep and incomplete. Dylan Drakowski just couldn't get around to defensive Murphy Monreal that'll be third down Monreal started to reach his hand out realized what he was doing right to impede the receiver and pulled that hand back it was close the heads up play on his part recognizing I'm running with you I, I, I'm tucked on your hip I don't need to reach out pull that back to make sure he didn't get called for pass interference Monreal an honorable mention all state defensive back for large schools a hockey player as well for the Hilltoppers 134 left in the half. Quick throw to Jocks Brooks. Forward progress, I think, is going to give him the first down right at the 35 yard line. Always a risky move as a receiver when you try and step and avoid a defensive player that's pursuing. If you go backwards, the ball's moving backwards with you. So you have to understand where you need to get right there. You see Connie went backwards, but they still gave him that forward progress because contact was made. Right. Brooks was made the fifth captain on the team because of his outstanding leadership. I tell you, senior leadership on the Franklin side, too. Senior dominate. A lot of players played on that 21 championship team. Now Calais chase out of the pocket and down he goes. Bryce Roder with his fourth sack of the year. Linebacking play here tonight for both teams has been really good. Bryce Roder. Give a timeout. Franklin. Okay, so Franklin will burn its first of three timeouts. Roeder who made that sack. High academic science Olympiad and freshman retreat captain. WFCA all academic 
team in the state of Wisconsin. So many of these guys are not just football players. They're great in the classroom, great in the community. There's some good ones out there. Yeah. Well, we talked about that before, right? That senior leadership, the expectation, and how you carry yourself, what you do in class. Go to class, get your work done. Pretty simple philosophy, right? But sometimes that's a little bit easy, harder to, to do. It's not so easy with some of these guys. And you're managing, as a varsity coach, not only your varsity staff, but your JV staff, your freshman staff, and making sure those messages are carried all the way through. Well, Marquette's season was cruising along. All of a sudden, they lost 50 to 21 to Hamilton in the middle of the year. They had they had four straight shutouts, and all of a sudden, boom, a big loss with it. Kind of righted the ship in some ways. Pass. Ooh, boy. Close coverage there as Nick Womack closed in on Andrew Human. That ball hung up a little longer. That might have been a pick. So third and 17 for Franklin. Marquette would love a stop and get the ball back, perhaps. And they still have a couple of timeouts remaining. The first half stop on third and 17. Throw. Brooks complete. Breaks one tackle. Now four Hilltoppers there to bring him down. That's going to be about a yard short at the 45-yard line. Marquette calls a timeout. Mon timeout. Marquette. Okay. Monreal with the tackle. Keith Glasinski was an assistant coach for 23 years, was the defensive coordinator, and was the interim head coach, named head coach in January of 2021, led the team through that COVID year, and that COVID year was really something, and you know, we're still figuring out how we got through it all, and right. what, what the effects were, but fortunately we're somewhat behind it now, at least a little bit more. Krasinski says he wants people to know a Marquette Hilltopper without even seeing them play on the field. I wanted them to know one of their football players because of the way he acts and conforms and comports himself. Sounds like a pretty good idea. Yeah. And that's a message that is sent often, so it's, you're reminding your players consistently and continually of what's expected. Okay, fourth and one, and the Franklin offense is out there at their own 45. Well, we'll see if they go through with it. It's less than a yard for a first down. They have to get the 45 and a half. They are going to go through with it. Shelton breaks to the outside. And into Marquette territory. <laughs> I was watching. They had an extra offensive lineman in the backfield. There looked like there were a couple of the guys were confused. They finally got the formation shifted correctly and then see the speed that young man has to get to the outside edge. Marquette probably thought they were going to come up the middle. They went off tackle instead. And nice play call. Great execution. Now at the 47. Clock running. 20 seconds left. Calais running. Breaks a tackle. Now stood up. And down he goes at about the 40. Franklin will call its second timeout. Risky scrambling there. Timeout. Franklin. Nice job in the back end by Marquette covering guys, and nobody was open. You, you can almost call that a coverage sack, even though he gained some yards out of that. But you got to be careful as you pull the football down that you tuck that away. Don't carry it out front, but both hands on it. Get it tight. Does a real good job of protecting that and getting the, the positive yards that he did. But you just have to be smart and aware of situations here. 13 seconds left. Franklin's probably going to take a shot downfield again to see if they can get something on the scoreboard here before half. Franklin assistant coach Mike Beck and head coach Lewis Brown are the only two guys still on the staff that have coached in all five state championship games for Franklin. And another note from Coach Brown, defensive coordinator Ken Whiskey is the drummer for the number one cover band of the Milwaukee area, Failure to Launch. How about that? How about that? I'm going to take a guess on what he's doing tomorrow night. <laughs> That's the football season. <laughs> yeah, right? Unless he's a hunter, of course. That could be. <laughs> All right. Second and three. 13 seconds left first half. 
Franklin with still one timeout remaining. Kelly throwing, completing. That's another catch for Josh Brooks. He's calling timeout. I don't know if the bench wants him to. The clock stops for the first down chain move. Seven seconds left. They're going to get on the ball here and spike. Yep, they have not called the timeout, although Brooks looked like he wanted one. Calais with the clock running. Will spike it. Oh, boy, that took a couple of seconds. Yeah, it did. So now four seconds remaining. Nice job on the play call here. You have one receiver running shallow, pulls the corner up. That opens up the, the pocket. In between the, the safety in the corner and a nice job delivering ball right into the pocket for the first down. Well, Cooper Mueller's on to try the uh, field goal. 10 of 14 on the year. His long is from 45 yards, so he's an effective kicker as well. They'll spot it at the 27, so it's a 37-yard attempt. To tie the game going into halftime. Now, before the snap comes, we're going to have a timeout. Franklin will take the timeout. Gives you a chance just to communicate a little bit more, settle the guys down, making sure that the offensive line, the guys up front, step down hard. Don't allow a pocket or a gap to get through. If you have wings, make sure your wings step down hard. Again, it's, it's all those things, just quick reminders for your players to settle in when they go out and play. Coming into this game, Marquette has outscored their opponents on the season 490 to 93. Wow. Pretty impressive stat. This drive has gone 11 plays, 56 yards. They've taken 217 off the clock. Now they hope to kill the rest of the half and go into the locker room tied. Again, 37 yard attempt for Mueller. And another whistle. And Marquette will call the timeout. Scott, you've been around <laughs> football all your life. Does I see the kicker ever work? I don't know. Or rarely. Yeah, ra yeah probably rarely. It used to drive me nuts. Like, you're all getting, you get ready to go and then you stop. You get ready to go and you stop. It's yeah. frustrating from that standpoint as a player, but. I don't know if the ice in the kicker works. Sometimes if he misses it, obviously. Yeah, it did its job. If he makes it, like, what do we call the timeouts genius, for? Genius, yeah. 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 <laughs> Someone said, depends what's written on his forearm, like that German exchange <laughs> right. that you had, just like practice written on his forearm. There's Mueller. Doesn't look too bothered by the situation. Nope. He's just running through the process in his head, right? The snap, see the ball, kick, finish your kick. Hey, the good news for him, everybody's out of timeouts. Yeah. We're going to have to kick it. we got to go. Here we go. It's been said before, it's a 37-yard field goal attempt. <laughs> good look at it from behind the goal post. And, boy, he nailed it. Mueller from 37 is good, and we will go to halftime all even at 10 in the Division I State Football Championship. Well, that was an entertaining first half. Yeah, it was. And you want to put your guys in the opportunities and give them a chance to go, and tremendous job by both squads here in the first two quarters. 10-10 at half. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. Looking like another nail-biter here at Camp Randall Stadium, 10-10 at halftime of this Division I State Football Championship game. We've had a lot of great games over the last two days. Let's give you a recap in case you missed any of it. Edgar started off the tournament with a 36-6 win over Blackhawk Warren to win their eighth state title. And then Stratford and the story of the tournament. The leg of a German exchange student kicking a field goal on an untimed down to give Stratford their ninth state title in the D6 championship. A lot of good games in the afternoon yesterday as well. Aquinas fell behind 13 to nothing in a hurry to Wrightstown. And then they said, you know what? We're the back-to-back -back champs. Let's do something about this. They scored 32 unanswered to win their third straight title. 
And then it was Lodi capping off an incredible day of football, 38-14 over Luxembourg Casco in the D4 championship. Today, this is the third game we've played, and we've had two really tight games. Rice Lake, a great drive in the fourth quarter to punch it in. They win 28-20. Then Wanaki and Badger back and forth all game long. Badger able to punch one in, get the extra point. Wanaki missed the two-point conversion that would have won them the game. An incredible game in Division Two, And finally, this one in D1. Who's going to win the gold ball? We are getting closer to that answer. We will come back and show you some highlights, give you some stats. But now we'll hear from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. Welcome back. Under the bright lights at Camp Randall, Marquette University High School, the Hilltoppers tied 10-10 with the Franklin Sabres at halftime of this D1 State Championship. Let's show you how we got here. Now, we've seen a lot of great rushing attacks. That's not so much the case in this game, but look at that incredible touchdown there from Marquette to open the scoring. And then Franklin would respond with a passing touchdown of their own. And then look at this. We have a field goal. So there's one. But we're not just going to show you one field goal. We're going to show you two. Not very common here in the high school game. But that is how we got here to 10-10 at halftime of this D1 championship. Let's take a look at the first half stats. Last game, Badger rushed for 451 yards. The leading rushing team, Marquette, has 44 at halftime of this game. So they're getting it done through the air, but this is mostly a defensive battle. This is going to be a tight one down the stretch. So who will win that gold ball? Well, Jay Wilson, Scott Nelson, they're going to take you the rest of the way. As we look under the moon at Camp Randall Stadium, message from your local sponsors. This is your WIAA Network Station. Welcome back to Camp Randall Stadium. We're just about ready to start the third quarter of our Division I State Football Championship. Marquette University School, Hilltoppers 10, Franklin Sabres 10. And we're going to go down to the field right now. Nick Tabbert with an update. Hi, Nick. Hey, guys. Talked to Coach Brown just coming out of the locker room here a short time ago. Asked him what kind of a jolt that last drive and field goal gave to his team. And it said he said it was a big jolt. And he found some tempo and some rhythm with that offense, which was huge for his squad. I asked him if he's gonna, what he's going to try to do to try to get that run game going. He said he needs to uh, try to pass to set up the run. He says they're just a little bit too predictable right now. On the other side, Coach K, he said it's a brand new ball game. He said it's going to come down to who makes the fewest mistakes. 10-10 right. our score midway through. Well, the defenses were dominant early, and the offenses started clicking, and then a couple of field goals, and that's where we are, 10-10. I really liked here in the first half, Jay, the way that they battled back and forth, right? Defensive stops to begin with, a couple drives stalled out. They got some things rolling, trying some different different stuff. You establish a little bit of identity and the predictability part, right? Running on first down, running on second down, then going to a pass. That's kind of what you've seen a little bit throughout the course of this whole thing. But they're starting to change that, right? And, and so you're not as predictable. Third down and long, we've seen a couple situations in that way. The guys are executing really well. But you're playing against two really good teams here, right? We've seen that. Physical, they, get, they hit hard. They pursue really, really quickly. And they get out of their breaks. And, and when you can do that, good things happen defensively. Now it's the trickery between the two. Where can we find a hole? Where can we gash you up in the front? Um, what kind of blitz are you going to dial up defensively? Do you show man coverage and disguise and drop in the zone or vice versa? All those little things here to start the second half. But these drives are really important. For both teams to start quarter three. It has been a great week, the 47th annual WIAA State Football Finals. We started Thursday morning at 10 o'clock with Edgar Carter Butt. Oh, was he something? 36 6. Edgar wins for the eighth time in his history. Lorenz Platter. Platter is a household name now. He's the German foreign exchange student who got the game winning field goal. His first ever in the United States. And Aquinas rolled over Wrightstown, 32-13, third straight title for the Blue Golds. Rice Lake, or excuse me, Lodi, Lodi rolled 38-14 over Luxembourg Casco. Dave Poles last game as the Blue Devils head coach. Then Rice Lake with a late score, beat Grafton 28-20. And then in Division Two, it was 
Badger holding on against Wanaki. The Warriors scored late, went for two, didn't get it. 34-33, Badger winning it. First trip to state for Badger, if I'm not mistaken, and, and that's hard, right? You go against a coach and Pat Rice in, the, in a program like Wanaki that's been here a number of times, but they didn't back down. Wanaki struck. They were physical. They got after him. The speed of the Wanaki defense was really good. Sometimes they over-pursued. Sometimes it went to the wrong gap, and that's where you saw Badger gash a couple big plays, and, and that hurt, right, for Wanaki. And, but you gave yourself a chance. That's really what it is here tonight where these two teams tied heading into the second half here now 10 to 10 you just got to get in position where you have a chance and if you can continue to do that usually good things happen novotny and montreal ready to receive the kickoff from cooper mueller from franklin and our second half is underway pretty good kick back to the three where montreal will take it has a gap has an opening 30 40 gets past mueller 40 30 20 10 I think they got no nope, touchdown they call touchdown but there's a flag way back downfield oh boy boy he just hugged that sideline and just kept in yeah back at the 30 yard line of Marquette there is a penalty marker and that's never good news for the return team I saw the early indication might have been holding back around the 30 31 yard line Talked early and before the game. Special teams are going to play a big part of this. You saw a big play. Holding on White on the return. 10-yard penalty. First down. Wow. That would have been a 97-yard touchdown. Big return, but this is something offensively that you can use. You, you, you just got to pull there back. Yeah. The, the shirt. yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Pretty obvious, right, from yeah. that standpoint, but... Again, special teams need to play a part here in the second half. Either field position-wise, scores, whatever the case, but this is something offensively Marquette has to use to their advantage. Franklin will come out, didn't hurt us. We got the penalty, saved us a touchdown, but a little bit of the momentum, right, shifts early towards the Hilltoppers. Now they got to find a way to maintain it, even though they're backed up all the way to their 12-yard line instead of six points on the board. Nathan Kazmierzik was the Franklin player who said, come on, dude, he grabbed me. The officials were got the call. Right play, right call. Okay, back now at the 12-yard line is Marquette. Novotny, first play from scrimmage, second half. Rolls forward for about six. There you see how the Marquette drives went in the first half. Slow to start, pretty good in the middle, and kind of slowed down again at the end. Yeah, sandwiched the two scores around the punts. Second and five, Hilltoppers. Novotny still trying to break a big one. His longest rush so far is 11 yards. He only gets one there. Just a slight hesitation on the snap reception by McDevitt, and that pauses your running back, has to wait for the exchange, allows the defense to pursue just a step quicker, doesn't get much out of that play. So now McDevitt and the Hilltopper offense face third and three from their own 19. Devitt keeps it, throws it. Incomplete. Is it intercepted? Or is it a catch? Nope, incomplete. Wow, a lot of things could have happened there. Hoffman thought he caught it. Ty Davis was there for a possible interception for Franklin. Great effort here on the tip, not only to him, but then I, I believe it was number three. Yep, Frank uh, Davis. Right, Davis, right? Yep. Just extra effort getting to the football that way. But again, this is a time where you don't let up, right? The hammers down. Both teams have the gas pedal down hard. You got to give those extra effort plays, and, and those are the things that can, that can really tip the the scale in your direction. Eric Schmidt into punt. He's the number one ranked punter, number three ranked kicker in his age group in the country. Scholarship offer from Wisconsin, interest from Notre Dame, Michigan, others as well. This punt will roll inside the forty and. Down it goes, and that's where Franklin will start with very good field possession in their first possession of the second half. Statewide sponsors, this is your WIA Network Station. Early third quarter, still tied at 10. Franklin takes over. 
Joey Kelly passing 12 of 16, 163 yards and a touchdown. His top target, Jock Brooks, five catches, 77 yards. And that time, Hillman gets it. Boy, he takes a lick from Ryan Tomlinson. Snapped his head back, but that's another catch for Hillman. That's number five for the Franklin tight end. Delivering hits like that, taking hits like that, that's right where you look at what's the off-season conditioning and lifting program. I mean, you have multi-sport athletes, those things, but this is where your bodies, you have to secure the football. He did snap back, got bent back a little funny. Again, a really good hit. Great job of securing the football and maintaining the catch. Marquette had only 10 players on the field to start. One of them rushed on late, but wasn't part of the play, so I'll have to shape that up. Brooks across on a little slant, incomplete. Montreal defended. Much better recognition on the slant route. That way you had a defender coming in with him. Tough, tough one to secure that when you get hit like that. Meisner a little slow getting up. You see he's got a little bit of a limp here and rubbing his left leg. He's going to stay in the game, though. I think a couple extra guys weren't sure if it was a catch pass or a fumble, and so they both dove at and he got popped there a little bit at the end. Third down and one for Franklin. Shelton. Didn't get it. Well, they're going to spot him a yard short. Calais says he got it, but based on where the spot is being laid down, it's going to be about a half yard short. Well, he ran into his own guy, Sebastian Albano. Pelior Bonnie, big defensive lineman up front there, one of the stalwarts in that D-line, six foot, 285 pounds. Defensive lineman of the year in the conference, honorable mention all state, Kelly Orikmani. He can plug a gap or two. Uh huh. Good size fella. Six foot, 284. Mueller in the punt. Averaging 37 yards a punt tonight. They really boom this one. And that's going to die at about the 10. It'll spin back away from the goal line. That's a pretty good punt. 14-yard line is where it starts. The 2023 WIAA Football Championship is brought to you by the Wisconsin DOT. Zero in Wisconsin. Together, we can save lives. Now, first two drives, kind of like the first two drives of the yeah. game in the first half. Three and out for Marquette, three and out for Franklin. Special teams, again, an important part. You can pin a team inside their own 20, in this case, inside their 15. Almost checked up right at the 10 yard line, but took a bounce backwards. And it's always amazing to me how that football, when it bounces, how, how it acts, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it goes forward, sometimes it checks up, sometimes it comes back. You just quite never know, but really good. Coverage by that punt unit for Franklin. Well, if it weren't oblong, it wouldn't. Be yeah, something right. That wouldn't be nearly. Although basketballs bounce off a of basketball, it's strange too. And off the snap, they bobbled it. Manny Joseph was there. McDevitt couldn't quite handle the uh, shotgun snap, and then Novotny tried to help out, but it ended up with Joseph making the play. Nice job, design blitz call from the outside linebacker. That's one where Novotny needs to pick that up. Just as delayed, the whole thing just started bad. That's a loss of seven. Novotny, now he breaks clear, and he gets past the 20, just short of a first down. Manny Joseph, by the way, got that last sack, putting together a good night defensively. Six tackles and a sack for number four, but nobody got number seven on this one. Third and one. Third and one. Little tempo from Marquette. Novotny, that's going to be just enough for a first down. Will Graffin had a hold of him, but... And now Novotny's slow to get up. Novotny got the first down at about the 25, but... We'll take a break and then check out the condition of Tommy Novotny. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. This is your WIA Network Station. 
while you're away, Tommy Novotny walked off. They were working on him on the sidelines. He was rubbing his neck a little bit, and hopefully we'll see him back in here soon. Got to come off as an injured player. The fish are right there. Nope, you got to wait one play. They were testing his strength and checking his resistance with his arms, and he sure looks like he's going to be ready to go. Jack Dorley is the running back, number 26. Next to McDevitt. No fake to him. McDevitt goes deep and overshoots his man, Cam Russell. Second and ten. And here comes Novotny right back in. Good protection up front. A lot of time to throw. This is one he just got to lead his receiver. Just throws a little bit down the field too far down the hash. Allow him to clear away from the defensive back, but not a bad football, right? It's just one that you just got to have a little better location on. Second and ten, Marquette, they're on 24. Novotny, see what kind of shape he's in. Well, got about three. Tegan Fox, number ten. Outside linebacker made the stop. You can just tell Novotny he's not quite right. Like, just body language where he's at. He's trying to battle through that a little bit. That's one thing when they get on on the sideline. Athletic training staff, doctors, whoever they have for medical professionals, just check out how you doing, what's it feel like, right, to make sure the guy's okay. Third downs will become very important as the game goes on. Marquette, two of seven on third down situations so far. McDevitt. Gets the rush from Fox. Gets by him. McDevitt going long again. And complete! Thad Hoffman wins the jump ball with Nathan Kazmierczyk. Really tough situation here for Marquette offense. Going into the boundary, the short side of the field, they ran four guys all in there. Oh, that was Novotny. That was Novotny, oh, yeah. Seven, not 17. Sometimes you just got to throw it up. And hope your guy catches a great effort on his part. I guess he's, he's looking okay. He's yeah. Doing okay. So Novotny out of the backfield gets a huge reception. Makes those bumps and bruises go away quick. 34 yards on the play. Novotny to the ground. First through to the 40. Make it the 34 yard line. Five yard gain for Novotny. Pulling the left tight end and the left tackle. Jude Ballinger, the uh, tight end, 88, helping on the blocking scheme there. That's Ben Hefter, the defensive end for Franklin. Sabres trying to slow down this drive. Seven plays, 52 yards so far on this drive. Novotny. The 30, boy, you hear the pads cracking. On our field, Mike's. Just a little stretch left. Offensive line takes their first step. Everybody moves to the left. Nice job gaining body on body. And people always ask me, what's it feel like when you get hit like that? I actually rather hear the pads pop because when you don't, that's pad on flesh. It, that hurts more. Trust me, it hurts more. Third and one, Novotny. First down. Dominic Walters came up from his safety position to cut him down, but not before Novotny got the yard he needed and then some. Got a little adrenaline going after that big catch. You can see his body language a little bit different, not worried back, kind of feeling that. He, he's back in the groove. Got four on that last one. McDevitt going to the end zone and incomplete. Cam Russell was tied up with Cooper Camley. Everybody wants to flag. Both sides are looking for a flag. And I don't see any yellow on the field. Incomplete. Putting the ball up on the go route. Can't quite see it from that angle. Yeah, that could have been called. That could have. Probably should have been. Well, it's second and ten. Tommy Novotny. Wrapped up by Ben Hefter after a short game. This drive started at the Marquette 14-yard line. 11 plays, 60 yards. But now they face third and about eight. 
And burning time on the clock, too. McDevitt, quick throw, nearly intercepted, but grabbed by Hoffman. Oh, Keegan Fox. Oh, he was probably thinking pick six, but it got through to Hoffman. Yeah, you can see his hands as soon as he makes the break underneath this route. He's looking at it. Just came up underneath instead of just reaching and extending out. He takes both hands. That probably is intercepted, but yeah. don't give up on the play again. Get back in the mix. See if you can bring him down on the tackle and help your teammates out. Huge first down play. McDevitt end zone. Incomplete. Thought Hoffman controlled it, but was out of bounds. Well, they went up high. Hoffman, six foot two inch wide receiver, defended well by Ty Davis. Really good job of putting the receiver on your back. It's incredible he gets up and over the top. Does his feet get in? Uh, looks like it's right on the sideline. See those yellow goalposts? Those are the, uh, <laughs> the college, college goalposts. Goal yep. go up after the game. Mm -hmm. Game tomorrow, Wisconsin and Nebraska. Yeah, a little narrower goalpost for tomorrow. Novotny right up the middle. And still going, reaching for the end zone. Going to be just short. Wow, he squirted it through and darn near got six. Nice push by the offensive line and a great second effort by the young man Novotny to, to get it down at the one yard line. We got whistles now. Let's see a timeout call, but the officials are talking about something. Boy, he's stuck with this. Yeah, great surge he got in this. was all extra effort, just serious desire to get to the end zone. First and goal, Marquette. Novotny slams into the end zone. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. Going off the left side of the offensive line, just a great surge by those young fellas. Center, left guard, left tackle, all the way through, and then it made it really easy for your running back. You just watch them wall them down, push guys out of the way, reset them back into the end zone. Nice six points and a tremendous drive for the Hilltoppers. Well, again, Novotny's longest run of the night is 16 yards, but he's 25 carries, 112 yards, and the go-ahead touchdown. Extra point by Schmidt is true. 17-10, Marquette. 15 plays, 86 yards, 5 minutes and 14 seconds. We talked about special teams a number, number of times tonight, pinning them deep. But what a tremendous drive. Really controlled, executed really well. Guys making some big-time plays. And simply just having fun, yeah. right? You, you can tell yeah. they're excited. The adrenaline's going. Got it. Crowd is into it. This has been a great atmosphere tonight. On the back of the Marquette helmet, you see a little yellow sticker that says Coach Taylor. That's in honor of Al Taylor of Marquette University High School, who passed away. 22 years of service at Marquette. He was known for shaking his key ring, carrying a baseball bat, and delivering one-liners. <laughs> a beloved longtime Coach and assistant dean of students at Marquette University, Coach Taylor, see it right there. Okay, so the Hilltoppers now back in front, 17-10. Schmidt, such a great weapon on special teams. He'll bang it from his own 40. Boy, he banged this one. That's going to go midway to the end zone. Wow. Nice to have that threat that way, right? Put it in the end zone. Mm -hmm. Defense comes out. You know you're lining up at the 20-yard line. Not too many kickers in high school can consistently do that like he does. Right. Yeah, number one kicker ranked in the country. Number one punter in his age group. and Number three kicker. Well, a kicker thing. You know, our son was a kicker in high school. It's like... There's so much more to kick him than just kick him. Yeah. You gotta have the snap, you gotta have the hold, you gotta have the guys block up front. Kelly, first down throw. And caught by Brooks. Nate Schram roped him down. Old wrestling body slam gets him wrapped up, brings him up and over his shoulder here. That was a little flip job, huh? Couldn't quite get him, and yep, I still got you. Two points, take down. There you go. <laughs> 
Gain of about five. Fake to Shelton. Here comes the rush. Wow, Kelly got out of it. He's going to run for a first down. Shifty moves by the Franklin quarterback. Well, he felt the pressure because Marquette was coming for him. Really good job of reading that, tucking the ball, almost gets it. This is where you got to get two hands on the football, tuck it away, but he finally gets it to the outside arm. Good play call defensively, but even better effort on the other side with Kelly to, to get the first down, move the chains. And this is what they have to do. They got to grind some time. They got to continue to move the sticks, try and get down the field and see if they can even this game up. Six yard gain for Kelly gets Franklin a first and 10 at their own 31. Again, the rush coming, and they were trying to float a little screen pass, but Shelton was taken down, I think. And we got a flag and a hold. Yeah, flag and a hold in the backfield of Mark uh, Franklin. Excuse me. Nice job recognizing the screenplay by that front seven for, for Marquette. Not allowing it, that play to unfold because they had it set up. A couple guys were in the way, which is probably why he got the hold trying to clear him out of the way. It's Cole Fisher, 92. We have a hold on the offense. Repeat first down. So that'll cost him 10 and make it first and 20. He grabbed around the collar there, I think. Too. All right, that rush is really coming for the Hilltoppers. Another penalty marker. That's going to be another hole tonight. Boy, they just can't stop that rush on the outside of the right side. Well, there's a little energy now in that defense, right? They're just teeing off, and guys keep coming hard. And yep, yeah. nice to call by the official, grab his jersey. Smart to throw the football away from Calais, but again, on that outside edge, they're just beating him with speed around the edge, and that, that's hard to combat. You, you really just, you, you got to do what you can to protect your quarterback, and unfortunately... We have a hold on the offense. Penalty declined. Second down. Okay, so the penalty declined. I'm so happy. I said it was a hold, and Pat Miles walked... <laughs> gave looked you the over, thumbs gave up. The thumbs up. It's like, Dad approves. This is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Pat's going to be the white hat at the Isthmus Bowl tomorrow in Sun Prairie as Augustana takes on Platteville. That's going to be a lot of fun. That should be. Should be another great day for it. Two o'clock kick. You can go to that, and then he come here and watch there the you go. In Nebraska if you want. Second and 20. I think, yeah, Franklin's going the wrong way here. Shelton. Oh, great open field tackle by Patrick O'Brien. PJ, they call him. His dad played the NFL, CFL, World League of American Football. His mom's a decorated track athlete in Ohio. His sister, Jaden, is the NCAA champion in heptathlon and an All-American at Notre Dame. His brother, Shane, all-son conference safety at Ave Maria. And his other sister is a track runner at Ave Maria. That's some good genetics oh. family, huh? Oh, my old Brian. Third and 21. Oh, through the hands of Josh Brooks, and boy, he catches that. He might be gone. That could be trouble, yeah. I, I think that's one thing, right? You sense the ball coming, you sense a defender coming, and that's just one where you got to focus in, knowing you're probably going to take a big shot, but nice job of avoiding there by the defensive back as well. That's one he probably typically makes. Went up high for it just off his fingertips. It's amazing how just fractions of an inch yeah. make a big difference in completing plays and passes. Calais just missed. Okay, another punt from Mueller. That's Montreal back deep with Novotny. Mueller tonight, 37 and a half yards per punt. This is his sixth punt. This is Novotny trying to return it and does. And boy, great field position for Marquette. They're in plus territory right at the 41-yard line. Good special teams again by Marquette. Setting up a short porch here at, at, at the 41. Really good job of securing the football. and They've been finding ways to make plays. and, and They've just 
in this third quarter, right? Have really owned the third quarter, quite honestly, over Franklin, just stopping, dialing up different things, but continued pressure defensively. And this offensive line has been tremendous here in the second half. Their defense has contained Terrence Shelton. The only way that he's really, really been involved, Jay, as of late, is in the pass game. The run game has not been working for Franklin. Make the pitch to Novotny, kept by McDevitt, and a good run for the quarterback on first down. Got about nine, almost ten. And they're sensing blood in the water right now, where, right, they, they can feel the defense is on their heels, they're hungry, and they're aggressive. And the play calling, they're having just letting those guys up front tee off a little bit. And then your skill guys, your special, your, your receivers, your running backs, and quarterback in that case are, are making a really good, or doing a really good job of reading those blocks and getting chunks of yards. Uh, Gabe Miller sealed the hole there for McDevitt. Now Novotny finds some opening. Well, gets a little push from Jack Hart. And that's close to a first down or about the 21. You used to see a year or two go, right? Like, you can grab your, your runner, you can pull him that way. Now you have to engage in the block. You can't necessarily push, so just engage with it. Put your hands right on, on another defender, and you're fine, but you're still pushing the pile. Another 10-yard gain, first down. Here's Novotny. This time runs into more congestion and gets about three or four. Franklin defense has been out on this on the turf for a long time during this quarter. They're starting to wear down. You can just sense that. Two score lead would be huge. Novotny, they continue to pound away. Whoa, that time Allen Summers spun Novotny around. Final seconds of the third quarter. You see it running under 15 seconds. And we'll see if both teams just decide. And it looks like that's exactly what they're going to do there. They're going to decide to run it down and go to the fourth quarter. Marquette University on the drive when we come back. Now a message from your statewide spots, or your local stations, excuse me. This is your WIAA network station. That's the end of the third quarter. Also, media. Zinski's in his fourth season as head coach at Marquette University High School. And Louis Brown, his 12th season as head coach at Franklin. 17-10 Hilltoppers as we start the fourth quarter. Tommy Novotny has carried the ball 28 times for 130 yards. There's carry number 29. More importantly, a first and goal. Four seconds in. Hilltopper, four seconds into the fourth quarter. Hilltopper trying to get what would be a huge score here. Novotny, again, tripped up. Keegan Fox stopped him. A little hurry up there on the second play call again. Franklin's on their heels right now, and that, that sped up offense really creates some trouble to the defensive side, right? Trying to get calls and cover the guys you need to cover and, and dial it up. So they're just feeling it right now. Second and goal, Marquette. Novotny to the two. More nothing fancy. Novotny, Novotny, Novotny. Yep. That offensive line again doing a tremendous job. We'll see what kind of surge they get here from the two-yard line. And there they come right to the line of scrimmage again. Tommy Novotny. Touchdown, Marquette. Boy, they had a chance right at the line of scrimmage, but he just shimmied to the left and went in, and the Hilltopper fans are celebrating 23 to 10. Really good job of recognizing a little jump cut to the side. Again, diving down number 10 for Franklin, Tegan Fox, and he just jumped to the outside of him, took it in for the score. Really good job, great footwork, and finished the play strong. Remember when Novotny went to the sideline, they were working on him. And... He might feel it tomorrow. Right now, he's well, not feeling yeah, anything. Not he feels feeling, really good. He feels really good. He saw his numbers there, second touchdown of the night. There's Eric Schmidt tacking on the extra point. 24-10 Hilltoppers, 10:54 left in regulation. Now a message from our statewide sponsors. We have a media time network station.
Tommy Novotny's going to sleep well tonight. 32 carries, 143 yards, two touchdowns. I have a feeling he might not sleep at all tonight <laughs> after the performance he's put on. <laughs> he goes sleep with that trophy, I think. Yeah, right? Well, Franklin has 35 plays from scrimmage. Marquette has 55 plays from scrimmage. Time of possession, Marquette 23 12. Franklin 13 54. Another booming kick from Schmidt goes into the end zone. Touchback. And, and you can see the grinding of Novotny wearing down right. that Franklin defense. Yeah, they've been out there a lot. This Pretty much, I would guess, out of the 12 minutes, probably nine minutes of the third quarter, and that that's hard, right? And some of those guys go both ways, offensively and defensively, so they're gassed from that. It's just you got to find something positive here. You got to get some yards and, and move the chains to get some that momentum back, get that adrenaline going again. Then some of that tiredness disappears when you have good big chunk plays happen. And again, but Terrence Shelton, offensive player of the year, has not been a factor in this game. Let's see if they can dial something up here on this drive. Eight carries, 19 yards for Shelton. They'll fake it to him. Swing the pass out to Wade Meissner. He gets the reception, gets about seven. P.J. O'Brien on the tackle again. I've been really impressed with this Hilltopper defense. The pursuit that they have, the tackling ability, right, to bring guys down. It's been tremendous here tonight. And that's what you got to have in this type of game. Well, and another thing that maybe not everybody notices of it. Marquette's great kicker got it to the end zone starting the drive at the 20 and giving their defense a little better chance to slow down that attack from Franklin. There's Shelton getting a first down carry. 32 yard line before he's taken down. Attacked right at the heart of that defense. We got the yardage he needed. I'd like to see him get to the outside edge and see what kind of speed he has to against this Hilltopper defense and how they pursue if, if they take correct angles or if he can change angles with his speed. Yeah. For, uh, offensive player of the year for large schools in the state of Wisconsin. But again, nine carries, 19 yards tonight, an average of 2.1 a carry. Calais scrambling around. Looks like he's going to tuck it. He will. A tram chased him out of bounds. Got four by eight. Two guys come open, but they're back towards the middle of the field. Awfully hard for him to stop and throw back across his body that way. A really tough throw for the quarterback. Probably a smart decision on that to tuck it and run. That Marquette defense again averaging 7.7 .7 points per game allowed. They've held this high-powered Franklin offense to just 10 so far tonight. Now we're under 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. Calais. Steps up, throws deep. Incomplete, defended there by Murphy Monreal. Jocks Brooks, the intended target. I think pretty good defense coming through the receiver as the ball gets to him. Again, good patience and protection up front. Ball's a little bit high. Doesn't grab on him, rips through the arm, punches the ball out. Really good job by the defensive back there in the back end. That is well played. Isn't it? Well, I got a little... <laughs> Little grab. Yeah, it. that's hey, fine. That's that's. Come on now. Defend. Oh, it's no. football. Believe me, I got a defensive <laughs> back sitting next to me. I'm going to do everything I can to defend. <laughs> Second break up of the night for Montreal on the pass. Calais finds Brooks, makes a move. 44 yard line, first down. Franklin. Brooks with seven catches tonight. This is not of the the realm that. Franklin can't score and get back into this thing pretty quick. Nine and a half minutes left in the ball game. They're, they've got a good drive going right now. Again, keep moving the chains. Get that adrenaline going. Start to wear down this Hilltopper defense just like they've been doing the opposite to you. So right now it's setting up really good. First and ten, Sabres. Here comes the rush. They sacked him. Mitchell Nigro with his sixth sack of the year. They've been successful coming off that left side of the offensive line for Franklin. Just been trouble with the speed defensively. Can't adjust to get the block, and that time your quarterback takes one from his blind side. That always hurts. So Nigro gets the sack of Calais. That's the third sack of the night for Marquette. Boy, it seems like they've had even more than that. Yeah, they've had a lot of pressures if they haven't got the sack. That's yeah, for sure. Guys coming clean. Okay, empty backfield here for Calais. Shelton in motion. 
Here they come again. This time, pass over the middle and complete. Monreal, another defending. Again, good timing. Getting to the wide receiver at the same time that the football does. Recognize it, took a little peek. Doesn't put his hand on him, comes around him, knocks it away. Excellent play. Good at that, isn't he? Getting around it, knocking it away. Got a little eye black going all around there, too. Right. <laughs> Murphy Mariano. Third and 16. Getting late for Franklin. They could really use a conversion here. Penalty marker. It's going to be another hold, I think. And Calais running for his life. Shovels it to Brooks. Wow. Tough running past midfield. Going to be short of a first down, but again, a penalty marker and a hold against Franklin. The pressure from the outside. Again. Yeah, they just keep going, right? Like That's been impressive. Just the speed that they have on the edge. Franklin just hasn't found an answer to protect the quarterback. Can't think, can't get things going, right? Your, your quarterback then gets flushed out of the pocket. Awfully hard to throw on the run that way. All the frustration on Coach Brown's face. Another holding penalty. We have a hold on the offense. Repeat. Is he going to repeat himself or are we repeating the down? <laughs> what, what, what should we repeat here? I don't know. <laughs> Fourth penalty on Franklin for 40 yards. Third and forever. Oh, 36 to be exact. What do you got for third and 36? How about another sack, right? Oh, man. That time, Kate Koala. Brings down the quarterback. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I think he was adjusting his knee brace. Okay. I thought it was a new celebration technique, but I guess he was just doing that. Yeah, and that celebration could have drawn a flag. Yeah, well, that's right. right? Got to be real smart here. Okay. Yeah, you're right. He just... Oh, well, that might have been a little extra. Yeah, a little extra. He did it behind the official, which was smart. <laughs> That could have been a flag, though, without a doubt. We'd like to see him have fun, but just be smart. Right. Punt for Mueller. Drives Montreal back a little deeper. Now the return. Tries to get the edge and is driven out of bounds. Well, that, that drive was eight plays, two yards. Took a 320. Wow. Okay, network stations now. This is your WIAA network station. We have immediate timeout. Marquette Hilltoppers hoping they're 722 away from their first WIAA state football championship. We shall see. They're in good spot. 24-10. McDevitt. You're just going to see a steady dose of run here unless they're forced in a passing situation, but they're just going to try and grind as much time as they can. McDevitt passing tonight, 11 of 18, 155 yards and a touchdown. That's a 61% completion. Not a bad night. Not a bad night at all. Second and seven after the three-yard pickup. Now they go to Novotny, left side. Nice play there by the Sabres defense. Jace Miller leading the tacklers. Almost split the two defenders. They slowed him down just enough. Miller's really Franklin's only two-way player. He tore his ACL as a sophomore. Wasn't quite himself when he returned, but he is back for real. And Coach Brown says he really jumps out on the tape. His dad, Jesse, was a former Franklin head coach. Jason Miller, 55. Third and seven. Must stop for the Franklin defense. Timeout. Marquette. Timeout. Marquette. 
Keith Kwiatkowski knows that if his team can keep that drive moving, that's a big thing for the Hilltoppers. And Franklin knows that the value of a stop gets them the ball back. They're down two scores. Those are discussions that the coaches are having with the players right now, understanding the situation. Your two scores down. Is it possible? Absolutely. Is it going to be really difficult? Absolutely. <laughs> so you're just sharing those that information, right? You're not necessarily telling them what 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 they have to do, um, but you're just talking situational things, right? With with here's what we're going to run. Make sure you cover this guy, this guy, right? We, but we don't have to do anything special. We have to do our job, and those are the important things that the players need to hear. Okay, out of the timeout, third and seven, Marquette. This is a big play in this game right here. McDevitt, here comes the rush. Throws it at the feet of Peyton Roby Brown. So give credit to the Sabres defense for rising up on that third down play. That pressure flushed him up a little bit of, of a tough pass, about a seven yard pass on us. He just threw a dart to the floor. Well covered in the back end. Again, pressure up front forced him in. In and up. Tremendous job by this defense here. Now we'll see what kind of return they set up. So Franklin forces the second three and out of the night for Marquette. Finally slowing down that Hilltopper offense. Here's Schmidt. I think the first one came on their first drive, wasn't it? I think that's right. Schmidt tonight, four punts for an average of 29.8, but one inside the 20. This is a spiral that turns over. Returned by Brooks. Wow. Caught it in the crowd and got a couple yards out of it. That was risky. Almost had interference by the coverage unit on that. Didn't call for a fair catch, and he's drifting towards the football. It's awfully hard to, to adjust as you're sprinting full speed. Risky catch on that punt, though. Look at Matthew Griffith making the play for special teams for Marquette. Okay. Those have been big for the Hilltoppers tonight. The kicks, punts, all those things. The coverage units have been tremendous. That's Kate Kowalik, defensive end for Marquette. Now it's time for the Hilltopper defense to respond. Calais, throwing sideline, complete. That's the tight end, Human. That's his sixth catch of the night. Looks like they should have the first down. Yeah, it's right at the 38. They give him the first down. They wave the chains forward. It's a sense of urgency now here for Franklin. They can't waste too much time if the ball stays in bounds. They got to get on the ball quick. Calais rolls right. Good protection. Throws. Incomplete. Guess who's defending? Murphy Mario. Again, just great timing by that young man. A number of different times tonight. Seeing the football coming, not going through the defender for interference. Reaching around and knocking the football away. Boy, his technique is sound. Yeah. That's understanding coaching. What are the coaches telling you? How do I need to adjust for this? And on probably his fourth pass break up of the night. Probably all in the last two drives. Oh. Boy, they've targeted Jocks Brooks 11 times tonight. He has seven catches. Number one for Franklin. Calais steps up and run it. 45, 50. First down. Spot him out to 49, but that's still a first down. So Franklin's doing what they need to do here, right? They get a score here. Maybe if they get it within the next minute or so, that can set it up pretty well. Then, you, then you're talking onside kick and all the things that go into that, too, to, to try and establish uh, ball control again. Drive. Be interested to see how it goes. Drive started at the Franklin 28. They're out to the 49. Calais, protection holds up again. Pass tipped, incomplete. Now they are looking for Brooks again. I think that was Patrick O'Brien who tipped it in the air, and then Brooks just ran out of room along the sidelines. Brian stands at 6-3, tips that up. Really good effort. Really good effort on the sideline there by Brooks, but 
Just out of bounds. Yep. Into the white border. Incomplete. Second and ten. Clock stops, though. 530 left. L.A. for Brooks again. Pass a little high. Nick Womack was going to gobble up Brooks if he caught it. Third and ten. Pass was tipped at the line, so that threw the playoff. Not sure that would have been completed anyways, and even if it was, Marquette was corralling those guys pretty quick. I think Kelly Ulrich Bonnie at Another list of it, six feet. He's got to be bigger now. He's <laughs> got a longer wingspan, I think. Yeah, I think so. Third down and ten. Kelly throwing. Intercepted. It's that guy again. Number 21, Mario. And into Franklin territory. What a night for number 21. Late flag on the play. We might have a late hit against Franklin, which gives another 15 yards. Be nervous to see what the official calls. Scott Nelson won a Rose Bowl as defensive back for the Wisconsin Badgers, and boy, you... After the play, we have a dead ball foul, personal foul, late hit on the defense, first down, 15 yard penalty. Nobody appreciates defensive back play more than Scott Nelson, and I tell you what, you got to love what 21's done tonight. Yeah, Mar Montreal has done a tremendous job. He's, this time he was able to step in front, got a, a quicker break. Four pass breakups on the day. He's had a tremendous game here. Really needed that from the Hilltoppers. And, and he's one of the guys that jumps off the charts at you in, in today's game. And he's setting up a highlight reel for sure for, for his future to go back and watch this thing. 32-yard return as well. And then tack on the penalty. Boy, they can really feel it on the Marquette sideline now. Yeah, you just see by the way they run out on the field, a little energy, a little pop in the old lineman step, right? They're not walking out there, they're still running, and, and this, it's great to see that, right? That that energy feed through the team. Down to the 22-yard line of Franklin. Boy, this would really be a clinching score. Novotny, carry number 34 on the night. He doesn't have the total rushing yards of Blair Mulholland a few years ago, but... Tell you what, he might, He's a workhorse. He though. might be going after the attempts record here. I think he'd be fine with that. Yeah. 34 is a night, isn't it? 34 carries. He'll feel it tomorrow, that's for sure. Second and six after a gain of four. Nothing new here. No Votney. Nice, smart guy. I'm running to the left again. <laughs> That, that offensive line for Marquette, Jack Hart, Gabe Miller, Matt Fessler, Andrew Richland, and Charlie Ingrisano. They have been something else tonight. There they are. 75, 57, 50, 51, and there's old 55, Jack Hart. Yeah, they, they've been tremendous. Pass protection, run game, all the way across the board. They've just done their job, and they don't get a lot of the credit. Yeah. That, that they deserve, but tonight was their night. This has been really good on their part. Well, and before the season started, Keith Glistinski admits that the offensive line was a bit of a question mark. He said that we had some questions, but not Jack Hart. He uh, you knew he could count on him. He's also an all-conference baseball player, Hart. Uh-oh, snap trouble. McDevitt gets it. Now he'll just run as far as he can before he's taken down. And the tackle by 42 Christian Bird for Franklin. Looks like we got a timeout, for Franklin. 337. Left. We have a timeout, Franklin. Just kind of took his eye off it. McDevitt looking to do the exchange with your running back and just forgot the one thing. You got to have the rock to do it. So fourth and nine now. Again, Schmidt, a very capable field goal kicker. His long on the year is 48. It's fourth and nine, ball at the 21 yard line. So it's certainly within his range if they decide to kick it. 
The Wisconsin Education Association Council thanks all public school educators giving their all this school year. We act, we teach, we inspire. Well, Blair Mulholland has the record for most attempts of rushing in the game. 46. <laughs> Gee, yeah, that was a heck of a game against Arrowhead. <laughs> no, had. Wow. Devontae's got 35. <laughs> well, hopefully he doesn't get to 46, right? You hope this thing is done by that point. Novani does have 203 all-purpose yards, 150 rush, 40 receiving, 13 punt. Here's Eric Schmidt. And no problem for the Marquette University kicker. Field goal good. 27 to 10. Boy. Now Marquette even more comfortable. Yep, he hit it out of the park. Here's our Wisconsin DOT play of the game. Cam Russell got things going with a long touchdown reception for Peter McDevitt. Yeah, and from that point on, it's been really hard sledding uphill, so to speak, for Franklin. They just haven't been able to find an answer to this offense for the Hilltoppers, and defensively, they've been on the field too much, way too long, and, and again, guys wear down after a time. This is their 14th game of the season, and you got bumps and bruises and nicks and all sorts of things that, that you're fighting through, and it's hard to maintain that level of intensity for the, the full course of a game if you're not making plays. And, and they just haven't made enough of them tonight, and, and Marquette has made a ton. Offensively and defensively, special teams, they've been intact on all phases of the game. That was a Cam Russell 44-yard touchdown reception, and that was your Wisconsin DOT play of the game. Zero in Wisconsin. Together, we can save lives. Here's the kickoff. This is Jocks Brooks. And good tackle around the ankles by Nick Womack on special teams for Marquette. Of course, everybody's getting ready for the big gun deer season, which starts tomorrow around Wisconsin. I, I hear like 700,000 hunters. Seriously. Yeah. Wow. And I guess there's a lot of deer out there. Yeah, apparently. And they've had in years. And so be safe, everyone. Have fun. Enjoy things. Be safe. Probably not quite the weather that deer hunters want, but right. not I'm a, not complaining. Not a whole lot of tracking snow on there. No. Okay, now Franklin finds itself down 17 points with 326 left. And in and out of the hands of Drillin Drakowski. Had a good season, 21 catches, 485 yards and five touchdowns. And again, this Franklin offense, which averages 40 points a game, averaged 40 points a game coming in, has held the 10 so far. They've moved the ball at times. 202 passing yards for Kelly. But again, they could never get the ground game going with Sheldon. Now let's see if he can do something with the pass reception. We'll get out of bounds. He'll gain about the 32 yard line. About a two yards short of a first down. That's really been the only way they've been able to get him involved in the offense. He tried to establish it early, but Marquette's defense was just swarming to the football, never really got anything going, and found a way to get him out on the outside edge. It's just through the pass game, but really surprised that the run game for Franklin, as strong as they've been all season, has not been able to get unleashed. Yeah, give credit to that Marquette defense. Absolutely. Brooks, another catch. Number eight on the day for Jocks Brooks. Again, the clock is the enemy of Franklin. 3-12 left. Down three scores. This is a pride drive for Franklin, right, to finish this game strong. You're in the right to be here. You beat a great Sussex-Hamilton team. Last week, Muskego the week before. Oak Creek, Kenosha, Brad through, through the run. And another sack. Hilltopper has just been too much defensively. That speed and that aggressiveness up front. It, it, again, Franklin just hasn't matched that intensity. And um, Hilltoppers are feeling it, right? They're feeling really good right now. And they can sense with 240 left in the game that it's their time. And, and they're they're giving everything they got yet right to the final whistle. Jake Kowalik was there. Mitchell Nigro was there. Let's see who they officially give the sack to, but 
Another second and 16 for Franklin. Now they give it to both Nigro and Kowalik. So they'll split that sack. And an incomplete pass will make it third and 16. Now it's been a great week. Congratulations to the state champions, Edgar Division 7, Stratford Division 6, Aquinas in Division 5, Lodi in 4, Rice Lake in 3, Badger in 2, and Marquette looks to be 219 away from winning Division 1. Also, congratulations to Florence, which beat Thorpe 32 to 30 to win the eight-man championship in Wisconsin Rapids last week. Third and 16, here comes the rush. Calais running for his life, and uh, did he get it off? Bryce Roeder had him around the legs, and I guess Calais did get the pass away. Good news is it's incomplete. Bad news is it's fourth and 16. All right, Calais going to see these ram helmets. <laughs> yeah, might have some nightmares, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Pointing at the ring. <laughs> Gonna get a ring, are you? <laughs> Hilltoppers. Okay, fourth and 16. And fittingly, it's a sack. Mitchell Nigro got him again. Just kind of the way the game has gone for Franklin. Just too much pressure again. Not bringing more than four guys. She'll be able to do that great job of setting him up, pushing up outside, ducking underneath, getting the sack and finishing this thing off. It, it's, it's just been impressive to watch this front seven work for the Hilltoppers. And the back end on top of it has been doing a great job in coverage to allow those guys to continue to get pressure and pursue. It's been great complimentary football for Marquette University. Mitchell Nigro, the outside linebacker, eight tackles, two and a half sacks tonight. What's the old saying? Offense wins games, and what does defense do? Championships. We go, baby. <laughs> okay, 202 left. Nothing fancy here for Marquette. Novotny with carry number 36. Alan Summers thought he'd get a tackle at the backfield, but missed him, and then you saw him pound the ground in frustration. Been that kind of night for Franklin. But for Keith Klistinski and the Marquette University Hilltoppers, they're going to go to 12 and 2 on the year, handing Franklin their first loss of the 2023 season. Clock running with a minute and a half left. Novotny tries the outside, gets a block for a seal, and still going inside the five. Cam Russell gave him about seven extra yards with that block. Now the Marquette Hilltoppers won the state title in 2009 in WIAA. They had eight WISA titles. And why? Keith Blasinski knows that his dad's looking down. Yeah, pretty proud moment, I'm sure. An emotional time, to be sure. Novotny trying to punch one more in. Oh, he stacked up. That was Manny Joseph plugging the hole for Franklin. Under a minute now. Now his dad won the WISA title for Manitowoc around Collie in 1969. And Keith Plastinski in his seventh or fourth season as head coach. He's going to win a WIAA title in 2023. One snap should call it a game. Yep. There'll be a kneel down victory formation for Marquette. That is one happy sidelines, and there it goes. We keep calling it a Gatorade bath, but it's, it's, it's just ice water. water. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Gatorade would be very uncomfortable, I would imagine. If you yeah, it's hard to get out of your clothes, too. 
Boy, it's good to get dunked when the temperature's in the 50s, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> well, what a showing tonight by Marquette University. Final seconds winding down. The Division I WIAA football champions, the Marquette Hilltoppers. Enjoy the moment. These don't come around very often, right? Yeah. A lot of hard work and effort goes into all this stuff. Coaching staff through parents, players, fans, everybody involved. And Franklin had a tremendous season. Just didn't work out the way they wanted it to tonight. They ran into a buzzsaw with the Hilltoppers and just couldn't find an answer when they needed one. And that, that's hard when, when you've been able to do that all year long. And um, for Coach Brown, right, he's been here before. They'll be back again. He's got a great program with a lot of good players. So it's, it's been really fun to watch both these to teams go at it. There you see the two teams congratulating each other on a great Division I final. Now a message from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. Great season indeed. See the emotion on the face of Franklin players, right? It, it's hard. You're, you're accepting second place, right? It's not a bad season at all. A lot to be proud of, but this one stings because they thought they'd come in here and, and give them a whale of a game and... Um, just again yeah. didn't have the answer that they they thought they would have but still a lot to be proud of with the brotherhood that they have down there that you can see all together they'll, they'll appreciate this as they get a little bit older with what they were able to do it still stings in the immediate right now but um, a tremendous season by those young men and what a year it was for Marquette University High School. They lost their first game of the year to Arrowhead 21-14 then they had four straight shutouts and then Hamilton beat them 50 to 21, and you're thinking, oh boy, where's this going to head? Well, they righted the ship. They had three shutouts to end the regular season, and they were dominant in the playoffs. Although Kimberly gave them all they could handle in that 14-7 level four win, but when all is said and done, the gold trophy will go to Wisconsin and 35th in Milwaukee. There's Keith Glastinsky, and boy, can you imagine his emotions tonight? Yeah, you can see the appreciation of his coaching staff. The players all came up to him, right? A lot, a lot of excitement on that side. Very drastically different from the Franklin sideline, but uh, tremendous effort on his part. He has guys ready to go right from the get-go. Um, they got after him. You can see the emotion right there. It's, and that that's just raw emotion, right? You know what he was looking up at? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's dead round. Yeah, pretty special. Wow. Boy, if that doesn't get you nothing. Oh, yeah. Marquette, state champions. from your local station. This is your WIAA Network Station. Marquette University wins the Division I Championship 27-10 over Franklin. Tommy Novotny, 38 carries, 167 yards, two touchdowns, and he's standing by with our Nick Debert. Tommy, you were a workhorse tonight. How special, how emotional is this win right now? You know, it's hard It's hard taking it in because only as a sophomore, but, you know, I love it. I love it with all these boys. Never never wanted to be with anybody else besides these boys. And Coach K set the example, the upperclassmen set the example, that leadership council, how did that factor into you guys making this run? You know, Thad, Cam, our Pete, Jack Hart, they all brought us through litur liturgies, everything. You know, we had good captains. You know, they just cared for us, fed us. You know, that's the reason we got here, all of them. How much fun was it to run behind that O-line tonight? I love it. I've been all season, and to be able to do it on this field with those boys and win, it's just something I couldn't imagine. Only a sophomore. Hopefully we see you again. Congratulations. Thank you. Marquette with its second title in WIAA history. Thanks, Nick.
Boy, that's a well-spoken sophomore, too. Uh, yeah. Got a bright future. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully two more years here for him, right? And there's Coach Cave. Man, imagine what's going through his mind right now. Fantastic. Congratulations to Marquette. It was a pretty good week. Had a couple games that weren't all that close, but I'll tell you, there were some really memorable moments this week. Yeah, he got a foreign exchange or whatever yeah. exchange student sure. that way, right? Kicking the walk-off uh, field goal and great games today. Yeah. Division two, Division one that we had a chance to really see and be a part of. Um, yeah, a lot of great effort here tonight, and, and and all these teams have a lot to be proud of, right? Even though guys that come in second place. You compete, you battle, you do the things you need to do. Um, and this is the pay dirt, right? And, and for the officials, everybody all the way through that, right? It's been a really special day. Okay, again, Edgar was 36-6 over Blackhawk Warren, Illinois in Division 7. Division 6 was Stratford 10-7 over Darlington. Aquinas beat Wrightstown 32-13 in Division 5. Lodi a 38-14 winner over Luxembourg Casco in 4. Then today, it was Rice Lake 28-20 over Grafton. In Division 2, it was Badger beating Wanakee 34-33. And tonight, Marquette 27 and Badger 10. That wraps up. The 2023 WIAA State Football Championships. We thank you all for joining us. For our great Rush Media crew. Man, that morning till morning. They brought you the great pictures. And here's some of the great moments from tonight. Again, thanks to everybody on our crew. Nick Tabert, Brad Hansen, Scott Nelson, Jay Wilson. Congratulations to all the champions and the runners-up in the 2023 WIA State Football Championships. Good night from Camp Ranch.